great about that, other than trying to help people who are in the state of the Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. This is episode number 483 of the Immigration Answer Show. I'm an immigration lawyer. Uh, I will uh, be here for the next hour answering your immigration questions, whatever I can do to help you learn about the immigration process. I am happy to do it. Um, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving weekend. Sorry, I didn't do yesterday's show. I wasn't feeling so great, but I am on the mend and ready to go. I'm excited about being here with you guys for the next hour. Um, let us know where you're watching from. If you're new here, uh, we have a link to the waiting room. And if you come in the waiting room, I'll pull you up and you can ask me your question. I'm going to start today's show with Peter. Hello, Peter. Oh, hello. I'm the honor of being the first one. <laughs> you're okay. first. Yeah. Hello, Gene. How are you? Uh, I have a couple of things, but you know, um, I just need a few minutes to explain my situation from the beginning so you have understanding what's going on in my case. Sure. Um, so me and my wife came to U.S. Uh, in 1997 um, from Poland as a Polish citizens, and we had a visitor's visa for the six month. You know, then we extended the visa for another six months. After that, we've been trying to figure out the way how to uh, legalize our status. And unfortunately, we fall into the hands of uh, immigration, like, you know, scammers. Uh, I'm not sure you're familiar with uh, Operation Durango. Mm -mm. No, anyway. I might have read about it, but I don't know it by that name. Yeah, I'm on one of the, like, you know, probably 1,500, like 2,000 people got scammed by, you know, uh, by those guys. Anyway, this operation got me into uh, removal proceedings. That was back in 2005. Um, I was fighting this case in the courts, you know, till 2010, and unfortunately, I kind of ran out of time and the money. Um, in uh, 2010, I just took, like, you know, voluntary departure. And in the meantime, I applied, you know, for the green card to Canada. So in the moment, you know, from 2010, I'm living in Canada, uh, Vancouver, Canada. Um, since 2015, we are also uh, Canadian citizens. Um, uh, last year, because, you know, uh, we had, you know, obviously the 10, uh, 10 year ban entered the United States because we overstayed our visas. So we went, because we just like, you know, five, 10 minutes from the border, we just went to the border, just asked them the question, what's our status right now? Can we enter the United States or not? Uh, they check our cases and, you know, they said to my wife, they're pretty much for her. She's, she's pretty much good. She can enter. No problem. Uh, with my case, they said, you know, that my ban is over, but, you know, because I had this Operation Durango case, I had, like, a misrepresentation on my file, which, you know, they told me that I have to apply for a uh, waiver. There was, like, an I-192 waiver. Uh, it was granted to me uh, in uh, October, I'm sorry, not, yeah, February 20 and 23 for the, uh, for the one year. So pretty much, you know, this October, this coming October, there's going to be one year, which is going to be expired. Um, in the meantime, like I said, we have uh, three children, all of them born in the United States. The oldest one right now lives in Chicago, and he applied for uh, our um, I-30 uh, as a parent. He's over 21? He is 22 right now. Okay. So we have a case right now waiting for the approval uh, in USCIS. Uh, hopefully, you know, uh, soon we're going to be approved because uh, our approval notice was on uh, February 2023 and we're still waiting. Um, that's everybody else, you know, it says that the case is taking longer than expected, so we're just waiting. Um, questions uh, right now. Um, can I extend my I-192 without any problems? What do you think? I've never filed an I-192. You know more about I-192s than I do. I just looked it up while we were talking. So I've, I've never been involved in that. So I don't know. Yeah, because, you know, first of all, they give you, like, you know, um, uh, the, the waiver for, like, uh, uh, for the one year. And then I think, you know, if you reply, uh, if you can just, you know, you can extend it, you know, 
for another two years. And I think in the last one, they give you for the five years. You're talking about so, just for visiting to the United States. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, the one reason why you might not get it, though, is because there's an I-130 on file for you. So the, an, an I-192 an, an I is for non-immigrant stuff. You've demonstrated immigrant yeah. intent. So I don't know. They might they might give it to you. They might not. I don't know. So like, you know, make, we'll make sure make sure you disclose that the I-130 has been filed so that yeah. they don't ever say you lied about that. Okay, sounds good. Second question is, you know, because we have this, uh, I mean, you know, uh, 130 petition already on file, once this is approved, what should we do? Wait in Canada and just, you know, going through all this consular process or I just, you know, because my waiver ends, you know, in February, so should I go back and stay with my son and then wait for everything to be, you know, processed in back in the United States? What is your advice on that thing? My advice is that you should do nothing, any nothing additional that looks like you're trying to get around the rules. I would consular process. Okay. So your advice I mean, is just stay in Canada. No, no one should, no one should come to the United States with the intent to adjust. Right. That's something that develops yeah. while you're in the United States. If you come with that intent, then you have a whole new misrepresentation problem. So, because you've already been flagged in the past, I think that that if you came and tried to adjust here, they they wouldn't like it very much. Okay, so your advice is just pretty much just stay away in Canada. Don't play with that thing. I mean, you know, the the flip side of it is that the embassy might not give you an immigrant visa. I, I mean, I think they should. You're past your ten mm -hmm. years, but you might you might need a waiver to get your your immigrant visa because of the misrepresentation. So the misrepresentation isn't cured yet when it comes yeah. to purposes of the immigrant visa. So I I can't tell you what to do. I can just tell you that either way it has its own problems. Okay, I see. If I'm gonna be even like you know asking you know, for the for the for the interview, uh, you just mentioned like you know probably I'm gonna require another waiver, and if I do, you know what kind of waiver it's gonna be, what number I should be pretty much concerned about. Well, you might need both. You might need a two twelve and a six hundred one. It depends. I mean, instead of I, I think I think that was creative to go to CBP and ask them what they're finding in their system when they look you up. But at the same time, I think you should do a Freedom of Information Act request and get your whole immigration file. Okay, can I do that? Yeah, G639 is the form, the G639. 639, okay. I can just apply over the internet? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Peter. Yeah, thank you. Bye, buddy. All right, Alina's here. Hello, Alina. You're on mute. Classic, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, good. How are Thank you doing? You for, I'm pretty good. Thank you for taking my call. I'm happy to see that you're feeling that. Thank you. Um, my question is about my denied I-485. Hmm. I'm trying to find out what are my next steps now. Um, I have applied for the form I-485 in February this year. I got married to a US citizen in January of this year, and I have been denied because they are saying it has been, like the form has been abandoned due to departure. Now the departure that they are referring to is a cruise that I took. I came to United States October of last year with a tourist visa, and then, we got engaged and then we went on a cruise from the December 2nd to December 5th. And ever since then I have not left the country. And then, so we got married in January. I start applying for green card in February and then I have stayed in the country ever since then. And so now I got denied. So now I don't know what I have to do because they are telling me that I need to leave the country and by the count of numbers, I need to leave the country just before the days. So you entered the United States. What, what country are you from? I am from Romania, but at the time I was living in Iceland. So I came from Iceland. So you went to the embassy in Iceland, got a B1, B2 visit visa in your Romanian passport. You entered the um, United States. Yes, however, I have had the visa for since 2016. I had traveled to United States 
many times even before meeting my spouse. So okay. I have like 10, nine or 10 entries to United States for the last one, which was October 4th. So October 4th, you enter on a visa that you've used before, before you get married and before you file the I-130 and the 45, you went on a cruise in December. Then in January, you got married and February, your spouse filed an I-130 for you and you filed a 485. Yes, and his has been uh, approved. His form is approved, mine is denied. 30 is approved, yeah. And when, um, where did you go on your cruise? We went from Florida to Bahamas and back. It was just three days. So um, then when, did they send you what's called a notice of intent to deny or did they just flat out deny it? Yes, they sent me the notice to deny and I still thought that I have this. So I've done it by myself, I answered. And I just gave them more information regarding the cruise because I thought, okay, if they can just see that it was a cruise, then maybe the problem is solved. Meanwhile, I called the cruise and then they transferred me to the airport and all of that. And what I found out is that on that cruise, when I came back, they consider a revalidation, like an automatic revalidation. So I do not have a new 94 with the entry from the cruise. I, it went back to my entry from October 4th. That's what they said at the airport. When I tried to talk with, yeah, with, I guess. Either way, that, either way, that all was before you filed for your green card. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so again, did they send you a request for evidence or a notice of intent to deny? Which did they send? Notice to uh, intent of deny, to deny. So... And did you like, so on something like this, you really have to hit them over the head. Hey, morons, I entered in October of 2022. I went on a cruise in December of 22. I got married in January and you did all that and they still denied it. Yeah, they are saying there are no Department of Homeland Security records to show that you were admitted lawfully after this departure, departure being December 2nd. So when I called them, they were like, no, you were revalidated. There's no, I was like, so do I, like, is it anywhere showing that I have entered unlawfully in the country? And they were like, no, you were a tourist on your B1, B2 visa, you're good. So that's why I'm so confused. Um, if you were to have an, a green card interview, where would it have taken place? Like, what's your field office? Um, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Can you um, can you send me the notice of intent to deny and then what you filed and the denial? I want to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, is the email address that I'm seeing it uh, written here in the? Yep, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, send that over. I want to take a look at it. I want to do a little bit of checking just because cruises are sometimes different, but I think I think they're they're totally wrong. I sure hope so. I regret that cruise so much, but yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, just for just for everybody watching, I do have I do have a video about entering on a so sometimes people come on a visit visa and they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend in America and they say, "Hey, let's go to Mexico or let's go on a quick trip." That is in reality a quick trip, but it is also a whole new entry, right? So it it can mess things up. So I think we might be able to fix this, but we might you might have to file a whole new case, but Send it over and we'll talk about it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Alina. Time. See ya. Yep. Yeah. See, that's tricky. Um, that's tricky. Uh, we've seen that before a few times. Um, and we've certainly been seeing more denials based on people leaving without advanced parole. But of course, they totally missed the, the ball on this one. Let's say hi to Akram. Hi, Akram. Hi, Jim. How are you? Great, how are you doing? Good, great. Uh, thank you for having me in the uh, for, um, in the show. I'm calling from Iran. I am a US citizen and uh, I'm applying for my spouse and his daughter. Uh, the problem I have now is that I'm uh, filling out the application I-130. I have no problem for uploading the files and the documents that are needed, but for the part that asking for 
if your uh, language is um, you don't use a Roman letter in the language, uh, upload a, a document with the native language. For that part, for, for only that part, I have problem to upload the document. When I upload it and when I sign out and come back, it's not there. That's the only part I have this problem with and I don't know what should I do. Uh, so we don't file things electronically, so I'm not the right person to ask this. We do everything on paper so that we avoid problems like that. Okay. Um, I would say at the very least, I would, if you're going to keep going and you want to file electronically, I would just keep going. And if you have to send it in without that thing, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but it'd be better to okay. just file the whole thing on paper. But that might be hard for you if you're in Iran. Yes. I don't know if... I can send anything by email to them or mm -mm. Mm, Not if I missed that part in the application when I submit it, uh, I will get the denial. I you don't could. know. And theory, there is no theory, customer you... service in USCIS. That's for sure. You're right about that. Yeah, yeah, I would I would just I would encourage you to and you're filing separate I 130s, right? For for your spouse and the child, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I have this problem for both and just for this part. I have so one, uploaded one, all the documents, all the four files. So one person is saying, James is saying you have to rename the document. I don't know if that would work. Maybe try to change the name of the document. I don't know. I, like I said, I have you know, changed the names, but yeah. Okay, I will do that again, but I have done it. Uh, like it's been a a week that I cannot submit my uh, form just because of this problem. Yeah. But I will rename it, uh, sure. And I have one more question, if it's possible. Um, I was wondering if it makes any difference if when we go for, the, my husband go for interview, if he goes to Dubai or Armenia or Turkey, do you think it makes any difference in processing an interview? You don't or, get to pick. Like, they'll pick they'll pick for you so, so you don't really get to pick okay okay because uh, in the application one part asks you if you want to go where you want to go yeah if you want to go so, to embassy so I, where would, you, I would pick dubai dubai okay all right thank you so much jim thank have you have a good day have a great You're day welcome. okay bye bye all right all right let's say hi to anna hello anna Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. Thank I was you. waiting for the show yesterday and it didn't happen, but hopefully you keep getting better. Thank you. Um, I think I was just run, I think I was just run down. I, so I have I'm a question. Better. So I'm all tired. Yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> nah. So my son, my our case, I've been here with you a couple of times before, but um, we finally got an appointment to go to Ciudad Juarez in January 11, thank God. So what I noticed is that, um, this is my question, the priority date before it was, before the appointment, it was um, April 29, 2021. And now it changed to April 4, 2013, because back in like 10 years ago with my husband um, did the petition for my for me and my son, mine kept on going and we submit everything. And, you know, I was able to came uh, with my visa and then I applied for my green card and now I'm a citizen. But for some reason, my son's information got lost and the person that was helping us, um, she passed. So we didn't know what really was going on. And then they closed the case. So, uh, you know, we, we submit the petition again back in 2021. And we finally got the, the appointment to go to Juarez. But so that's like, I'm kind of confused of why they changed the priority date from 2021 to 2013 is that gonna have something to do how old is your son 
he is now he is he just turned 20. okay so I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know why they changed it. It doesn't seem like it would necessarily hurt anything unless they're confused. And maybe that they, they're trying mm -hmm. to treat that old case. Like when's the inner, you said there's an interview coming up though. Yes. January 11. Yeah. So I, I, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as the interview goes forward and just someone's going to need to be able to explain to them both cases. So, um, you know what what happened the last time they'll oh, be confused okay. by that but i don't know why i don't know why they right. changed it to the old date yeah maybe they track it down back then i don't know because they closed that case back then yeah yeah as long as you the, the 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 interview notice come on the new case number or the old case number um it just came on the new because back then we sent everything with uh paper yeah i think you're fine and right now 2021 two years ago okay i stress a lot it's like something i like to do <laughs> yeah that's okay I no why. i think you're I, I i'm okay with that but i don't think you need to stress about this one i think you're in good shape okay thank you bye anna you see you keep us posted thank okay you. let us know how it goes in january yeah See ya. All right. That was Anna calling from Mexico. Giovanni's here. Hello, Giovanni. Oh, I think he hung up on himself. Let's go to Arshia. Hello, Arshia. Hey, hi, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you for picking me up. Sure. Uh, hey, Jim, uh, I have a question. Uh, with my H1B extension. So I got this extension uh, filed in October this year uh, for the H1B British extension. And I got annoyed and then my employer, he responded to that one and now it is denied. Saying Why? that the reason was, so they say like my initial petition, which was filed in 2013, it was filed in a master's cap and my university was not accredited at the time of graduation. Uh, I had the same RFE when I filed it in 2013 and my lawyer provided some documentation and the petition was approved in 2013. And after that, all the petitions were approved until now. Uh, but this extension, he, the USCIS pointed out saying that the initial petition from 2013 was still lacking the evidence of accreditation and we couldn't uh, approve this petition. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm not sure like what are my options now uh, to legally stay here or fight back or I don't know. Well, I mean, the Biden team did say that they were going to start, you know, honor or that they were going to start this. So so under Trump, they changed the rules. So in under Trump, they said, we're going to start revisiting old cases and we're not going to accept prior decisions that we've made. But the, the Biden people said they're going to change that rule back. I just don't think that's in place yet. I think that's just a proposed rule right now. So um, so what did they say? You have like a certain amount of time to leave the country or something? Uh, I, they, they did not say anything about the stay. Uh, all they said was uh, so they retroactively applied this rule for 2013 case and denied this petition. Do you have a do you have a green card case pending? Yeah, I have my 140 approved in 2016. And but you're just waiting for your for your priority date to become current. The 45 is not on file. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think you might be in trouble. I'd be happy to take a look at the denials if you want to send them to us. I could talk to Andrew here in the office about them, but I think that that although it's very very unfair, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to fight back. Okay. I mean, maybe we could, maybe we could sue them and say they've made a big mistake and, and all that, but I don't know if they're going to, if they're going to back down. It sounds like they've put some thought into this, even though it's unfair. Right. So, so if, if we can't fight, like, is there any other option for change of status to stay here until I find a solution? Well, aren't they saying that you've been out of status since 2013 or, or, you know, what, are, what exactly does it say? 
I, I think they did not they did not even talk about i mean uh, my lawyer he did not send me all the denial notice ad because it just happened right before the holidays and mm. they haven't got back to me on that one but i see the denial and they said it is denied because they retroactively uh, applied this rule to 2013 case send it to me i want to look at it all right okay. thanks arshia yeah thank you see you buddy see you. all right all right um, I saw some nice comments. I wanted to hit on a couple of them. Um, let's see here. How's everybody doing? Let me know in the comments what you got going on, what's going on in your neck of the woods. Um, where was that comment that I liked? I wanted to have that. It was sort of early on from Lizard. There it is. Lizard B says, hey, Jim, I hope you're feeling good today, my friend. My son has his oath ceremony tomorrow. Andrew was his attorney. Great guy. I agree. Andrew is a great guy. I am ready to start my process now. We'll definitely be in contact. Thank you, Lizard. That's good news. Um, and we're happy about your son getting his citizenship tomorrow. Isn't that exciting? All right. Let's say hi to Daniel. Hello, Daniel. You're on mute. There you go. Hi, how are you? Great. Awesome. So I have a question. Um, I submitted my I-465 or 45 and my VAWA, and um, it got denied because of abandonment like that's what it says on the on the appeal and all that like i just got out recently so i was trying to see like should i um read appeal again or just study or uh, process all the fresh like you know just the uh, 45 and one well let's back up when did you come to the united states uh in 2017. what kind of a visa did you have oh uh, f1 visa and how long did you go to school um for like four semesters and I'm still back in school. I'm actually going back to school in um, spring actually. And then you married a US citizen or no? Yes, I'm still married to a US citizen. Did they file the I-130 petition for you? Yes, it's been approved also. And then did you ask for it to be converted to a 360? Yes. And then what when they when they say abandonment, what do they mean when they say abandonment? Yeah, um, so I moved and they said um, I was supposed to send AR11, AR change of address mm -hmm. to them, and I, which I did actually, but they said um, because I didn't um, make a signature or sign on the AR11 that they can't do anything about it. So um, that's actually what came on the appeal. So I'm like, I don't want to waste my time and money again to appeal again. So I'm like, should I just start afresh and this time around skip on the vow and just do the uh, 45 alone since I'm still married, we have children together. And stuff like that, you know. Um, so, so now you're proposing instead of messing around with the 360 and filing a new one. Mm -hmm. Now, now you want to know: should you go ahead and file a 45 based on the approved I-130 that you have? Yes. Well, to me, then that that becomes the eternal question of what's what's your spouse going to say, and and how's that going to play out? I mean. Um, I don't know. I don't know how an officer is going to react to a fact scenario like that because, you know, all that impacts the marriage, all that impacts your vote. I mean, how are you going to explain to the officer? I made a claim that this person was abusive to me, but now I'm here with you saying this is a real marriage and I want to get my green card. How do you, how are you going to connect those two things? Because yeah, this is a situation that we have lived before and now we are like, you know, Back in terms and we don't have any issues again like relationships have issues you know like every relationship have problems and stuff like that so uh, we've walked past our own struggles you know okay so let me ask you this okay let me put it a different way okay let's say you guys show up for your green card interview right mm -hmm. and the officer says daniel i want to talk to your spouse for a little bit before i talk to you okay mm -hmm. and then and then and then he pulls out the officer pulls out all the statements of abuse that you listed on your I-360 and goes over them one by one, what is the what is your spouse going to say about all those things? I mean, she did it. <laughs> that, that may be true, but you didn't answer my question. What is she going to say about what it says in the allegations? Um, I really don't know what she's going to say, but um, those, those, are, those are not lies. Those are things that actually happen. And she's Dude, probably going to say- I have, I have no it. doubt. I have no doubt they're true. I have no doubt they're true. But I mean, so let, let me put it to you this way. If you and she called me up and said, Jim, this is what we want to do, then I would get her in a room by herself and I would try to scare the crap out of her. 
and see how she holds up. Because if if they pull out, if let's say you said seven things about her in the I three sixty, if she denies those things, then either you're a liar or she's a liar. And if if all that is true, if one of you's lying, then that's going to screw up the whole thing. I'm not saying that this is a bad plan. I'm just saying that this is something that everybody needs to think through. And I especially think this is a case where you need a lawyer to go with you because there has to be a lawyer sitting next to her when they try to scare the crap out of her, because that's what they're going to do. They're either going to try to scare the crap out of her to get her to withdraw the I-130, or they're going to scare the crap out of her by telling them, telling her she's going to jail because, because either you're lying or she's lying, or this is all a scam, or she's an abusive person. Oh, Daniel's out of here. I guess he didn't like my answer. Hmm. Well, those are my answers, Daniel. Hopefully you come back and see. Um, hopefully you come back and see what I said about you. Rambo has a nice comment. Hey, Jim, glad to see you live. I mostly watched the replay. You're the best lawyer so far. Very straightforward. Great advice. I would definitely hired you if I knew about you when I started. Let's see what Anthony has to say. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Um, my husband, Anthony, and I are on. Um, First time meeting you, but it's a pleasure. A lot of info today. Um, I have a, we have a question. Well, probably a few. Um, we had a, my husband came on a visa. It was a B1? Yeah, B1. B1 visa, and that was in 2017. Um, mm -hmm. We got married soon after. Um, I filed. All his stuff was the I-30, 134. Um, he got his unemployment um employment authorization card numerous times um he still has it right now but the case was pending for a long long time and Sounds one like of the, yeah one of the situations we had is my husband is a truck driver and so he he was traveling back and forth to charlotte north carolina so we ended up getting an, apart, an apartment he got an apartment there um when we went on the second interview they asked okay um where does he live etc so and i we told them uh, we weren't we we didn't like it and whatsoever and they ex asked me why i said well he's a truck driver and i don't want him going to hotels etc so um from there on it took some more time uh, we didn't hear anything we kept on calling kept on calling finally they send us a letter um that they're going to look at our case um they're reviewing our case then in august we got a um they knocked on the door uscis knocked on the door um, for, I guess, a surprise home visit. My husband literally just left for work. That sucks. <laughs> I know. So um, they asked a whole bunch of questions, went around, looked at our, our bedroom, pictures, asked a whole bunch of questions. And within a, not even two weeks, they send us um, the papers for him to do his medical report. To, That's good. Because they said that, that one from a couple of years ago expired and he needed a new one. Mm -hmm. um, now, we haven't heard anything, and it's, or, I'm pretty sure past the 90 days. What is our um, what is your take, and what should we be doing? What's the what's the um, receipt date for the I one thirty and the forty five? The receipt date. Uh, Roughly, when did you file? Is all I'm trying to figure out. Oh, um, twenty twenty seven. No, no, twenty eighteen. So five years ago. Yes. What field office? Um. 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 What is it? Wycroft and Durham. Right. Okay. Wycroft. Right. Yeah. And um, you said you had two interviews. Yeah, we had the first one, um, together. Then we had, of course, they also interviewed us separately. At both or just at the second one? The um, no, the second one. No, the both. They did interviews us separately. Oh, they they separate. Yeah, they did it separately and together. Mm -hmm. for, with both of them. When you filed the I-130 and the 45, what address did you use for yourself and for your husband? Like what um, city? Same, we had the same address until we moved and we updated everything right away. Okay. Okay. So, um, I mean, five years is a really long time for a green card. He, In theory, he could be a, a citizen by now if they had sort of done it quickly. Yeah. Um, when when you went to the interviews, did you did you bring them evidence of how you guys do spend time together, even though he drives a truck? Yes, I did. Um, we have. I mean, we're always together when he's not driving, of course. Um, he's home. 
Um, we have um, pictures where we go out to eat, pictures when we're together, um, family events that we go to. I mean, every family event pretty much. So I had lots of pictures and evidence. And when they came to the house, it was the same thing. And when was that that they came? When what what when did they come? Uh, they came in August. August. Yeah, and August. yeah, we had just came for my mother's seventieth birthday. Um, and then after after that was the medical. So it sounds like they believed you and that they wanted to move forward. And I guess there's just something holding up the case. I would say, I mean, August is September, October, November. So three months ago, ninety days, like you said. I mean, pretty soon, I think you're going to have to think about suing them because it sounds like they don't want to give them the green card. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, what's the hold up? That's what we were thinking. Yeah. So if you want to sue them now, we can. If you want to wait a month or two, we can do that too. It's it's whenever you want. But I think that for some reason they're just not given the green card, and and I think I think pretty soon you're going to have to sue them. Okay. And then so I can contact this and um. Yeah, send us an email there and say, hey, I was just on the show with Jim. Uh, I'm Anthony's wife at the 32-minute mark, and and we can follow up about a lawsuit. Okay. Thanks so much for the call. All right. Thank you so much. Any other questions you have, honey? Thank you. Bye, Anthony. See ya. All right. Daniel's back. Daniel, did you get all that, what I said? You're on mute. So, Daniel, if you if you show up at that interview – with your wife, they're going to separate you and they're going to try to scare the crap out of her. They're going to try to tell her she's going to jail either for abuse or for immigration fraud. They're going to read over every allegation that you made against her in the 360. They're going to try to get her to withdraw the I-130 so that your case is over, or they're going to try to scare her and say she's going to jail for immigration fraud or for being abusive. So I think you, if you're going to do this, which I think I'd really want to talk through and think through before we did it, go for the 485. I think that um, everybody has to understand exactly what's in there. Like I, if I were the lawyer, I would want to talk to her and say, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do all these things on the 360? How she's going to do. Um, and then I think you definitely would want to have a lawyer there with her when they do that, because she's going to feel a whole lot more confident with a lawyer sitting next to her than if she's by herself. And the lawyer is going to be able to probably keep them a little bit more under control. Cause otherwise I think they're just going to go off on her. Okay. Okay. So you, the suggestion about appealing is not like it's out of picture, right? I should not appeal the, the situation. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not saying, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe filing a new 360 is the right thing to do. I don't know. I'd want to look at everything over before I tell you, I'm just telling you what my concerns are. With mm -hmm. the with the straight forty five off the approved I one thirty. All right, all right, all right, thank, all right. Thank, thank you. you. See you, buddy. All right, all right. Let's see, Sam. Sam is here. Hello, Sam. You're on mute, Sam. Sam, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Yeah, it's the headsets. Mm -hmm. Sam, are you there? Mm, I'll come back. I'll come back, Sam. Let's say hi to Angela. Hello, Angela. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Pretty good. I mean, we got through the we got through the USCIS part. We got through the NVC. Then That's our stuff good. went to the consulate. And we are waiting for our interview. However, like every time we try to put in for an appointment, it says there are no appointments available. What Do you embassy? know anything about the backup? What embassy? Oh, Ghana. Well, I mean, if you since the last time we talked, if you got the petition approved and through NBC, that means you've only been documentally qualified for a little bit, right? Uh, since well. It depends if you have if you have to go from the time that you get your instruction letter, or if you go from the time that they actually send it to the embassy. They send it to the embassy August first, mm. but we got our instruction letter last month. Yeah, I mean, I don't keep track of every um, embassy, so you might look in the comments. There's a lot of people from Ghana that watch the comments. I don't know, but okay. I would think it's, I would think it's at least seven or eight months after they send it. Okay, I was just curious if you might know by any mm -hmm. chance. 
Thanks, and Angela. it says like you don't even get like a, a place to put an appointment. You just have to keep on checking the site, and they say check three times a day. I think that's all true. Okay. All right. I, all right. Thank I, you. As I say, it's no way to run a country. Bye, Angela. Right. I know. I know. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Let's try Sam again. Sam, are you there? Can't hear you, buddy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. There. Wait. I think I can you hear you now. Yeah. Now I got you. Perfect. So, um, so this question is actually is like in behalf of my friend. So this is what the situation is. So uh, his wife, she filed for him the I-130 uh, petitioner. Um, so, so what happened is the, the, the case now is bending, uh, waiting for decision, either approval or interview or whatever. So but what happened to his wife, um, five months ago, she went back home uh, to Pakistan, um, for some reason, she she got uh, we heard she got arrested there. And the um, petitioner, the petitioner, yes, his wife. So oh. so so there's a U.S. citizen who has an I-130. Is the is the beneficiary in Pakistan or in the United States? No, the beneficiary. It's uh, my friend. He's here. He lived here. They used to live together. Uh, they they live in together, but she went like a trip back home, and uh, the and next week, yeah, we next we know uh, she got arrested in Bolivia. In Bolivia. Yes. Um, so. Um, so why, we was know, she, why was she in Bolivia, and why was she in Bolivia without him? This this is it was like a, she told us something like her 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 sister was sick or stuff on. It turned out like it, she was lied to him. Yeah. Yeah. So basically now she's arrested. Now, uh, the question is like the scenario, let's say if the, the, the USAS decided to do an interview. Mm -hmm. So what's the situation on the case uh, in, the, uh, in this situation? Like if that your, your spouse, your spouse or she's... You think gets arrested in a third country? Yeah. It's crazy. It sounds like this case is over. It's over. Sounds like it. I mean, what happens if they call him for an interview tomorrow? What's he going to say? Oh, sorry, my wife left me five months ago. She's in some jail somewhere in Bolivia, maybe, and I haven't heard anything from her since. I mean, they can't They can't approve that case. You, they can't. No. And he cannot just show up by himself in an interview. He can, but they can't They can't approve that case. So... So what's your, what's your advice? Like, what's her problem? What I mean, is she a criminal? I think it's like criminal charge, like a drugs. She got involved with drugs charge. Okay, so um, I think he needs to file for divorce and figure out some other way. This the he doesn't want to go to bat with this lady. The, he's probably holding his breath, saying, "Ooh, maybe they'll send me my green card." Without, exactly. Without having exactly. an interview, but but they know she's gone. They know she's gone. They might not know she's arrested, but they know she's not in the United States. Oh, really? I'm sure. Okay. I mean, I guess if you're asking me, should he hang out here and hope he gets his green card? Should he keep hope alive on this case? I say no. No. So mm -hmm. he 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 should be like just file for divorce and be done. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, was he was he in status when he married her, or was he out of status? No, he came in visa and expired. And... Yeah, so that means so that means he married a criminal who's been arrested. I mean, that's that smells and sounds a lot like immigration fraud. Like he just paid this criminal to marry him, and and she got caught in one of her crimes, but not this immigration crime. I mean, he was like, I mean, he was living a good life until I mean, he don't I have no clue what's her background. The one thing, the one thing he might do is hire a private investigator to try to find out where she is and what the real deal is. I bet she's hanging out in New York City. I bet it's all bullshit. But that's a, this is that's exactly. I mean, we don't know exactly what she's doing. He, he told yeah. me I have no clue um, if it's true. If not, I mean, she contacted him in WhatsApp on uh, a Bolivian number. Is she from Bolivia? No, no, no. She's from here. I mean, she born and raised here. She have a family in Pakistan. I mean, so there's, no, I there's, no, there's no known connection to Bolivia other than the fact no, that she... No, no, no. 
crazy, dude. That's crazy. That is. It's, it's madness. I mean, when he told yeah. me, it's just he insane. Away from her. Yeah, he needs to get away from her and figure something else out. Yeah, it's just insane. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, th- yeah, he told me, I mean, just because he, he don't speak English well. So that's why I told him um, I will I'll ask around for you. But Thanks, Sam. Thank you so much, Mr. Jim. Bye, buddy. See ya. Wow, that was something you don't hear every day. The wife disappeared and maybe hiding out in a Bolivian jail. Who believes it? Anybody believe that story? I don't believe it. What the hell? I mean, I'm not saying Sam's lying. I'm just saying that um just saying that uh that's pretty crazy. Oh. Um yeah, I'd like to go to Bolivia for sure. Um Kevin says cocaine tri- crime scene. That might be uh, yeah, James is asking for the link for BYD. Let me um, get started with our next caller, and I'll, I'll look that up. Rashim is back. Hello, Rashim. Rashim, are you there? Hey, hi, Jim. How are you? Um, yeah, uh, hi. So um, I discussed with you about my H-1B uh, last week uh, that uh, it has been filed, and I got an RFE. So, uh, but my uh, employer is saying that he they haven't got the RFE notice yet in the heart. Uh, so, uh, my question is how RFE we used to get isn't the uh, uh, hard, co- hard copy or the soft copy we have to deal? Wait, what? I don't under. You got to remind me a little bit about your case and then ask your question. I don't remember much of anything. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, my uh, I'm from India, so my employer has filed a H-1B petition this year uh, for uh, for my for me, and uh, it was filed in the June. And uh, on the November nine, I got an RFE notice on the USAI's website. But uh, like uh, till now, my uh, employer has not received. The, uh, as they are saying that we haven't received the RFE notice yet um, to their office. So my question is, do we use to get by mail or by the hard copy? Uh, for the these process? days, usually you just get it by the hard copy in the mail. Usually that's how an RFE comes. Okay. Has anybody called USCIS and told them that this is missing? Uh, not yet. They haven't uh, called yet. I think they need to start. Okay. Yeah, I'd be calling them every day. Sure. Okay. So we should uh, send we should send a request to them that we haven't got it, right? Right. Like every day, you need to call them every day. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let me, then I'll have to connect with my employer. Sometimes you only get 30 days yeah. to respond to an RFE. So, you know, the clock's ticking. Okay. Did they use a lawyer for the for the application? Mm, yeah, my employer has uh, the uh, uh, lawyers for that. So it sounds like, sounds like they... Um, the lawyer didn't get it and the company didn't get it. That's that's crazy. Yeah, like on November 9th on the UCIS, they said that we have sent, but uh, my uh, employer is saying that uh, they haven't received it yet. And on the UCIS, it's mentioned that if, till 24th November, if you haven't received, then please send an e-request. But they haven't uh, sent uh, as of now because as per them, it usually take around... Uh, two to three weeks to get a hard copy of the RFE. Nah, that's not true. Well, good luck, Rasham. Let us know how it goes. Um, okay, Jim. See ya. All right, Natalia's back. Hello, Natalia. Hello, Jim. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for working me again. I have a few questions after I spoke with my husband. So we begin to fill up the I-864. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we find out that so last year he got diagnosed with diabetes and um, he didn't really do a lot of amount of money. Like it's around $5,000. So he cannot um, be my sponsor showing the taxes for the last year. But I was thinking, can we explain his situation? You can explain it, but you're still going to need a co-sponsor. Okay. He makes now a better amount of money. He makes like six thousand dollars for a year 
so he got a good job and we moved in Utah together. He got a good job here. And um, we can show his last uh, paychecks and everything. That's great, but you're still gonna need a co-sponsor. Uh, why? Can, why? Why? Because he made five thousand dollars last year. So, the, uh, and if he made uh, twenty, let me see, twenty-four something thousand dollars the year before. You're gonna need a co-sponsor. Still, okay. Uh, and he was in army, so he's uh, um, now he is in army, but he will be discharged soon because of the uh, of the diabetes. So he still is um in army so do we need a 100 percent or 125 um i believe it's 100 percent, but you're still gonna need a co-sponsor oh okay i will tell him this answer so um so he can he cannot be my sponsor uh, i uh, have to find someone well, he's, he's still the sponsor and you need a co-sponsor you need both he still has to do all the paperwork he still has to show the taxes for the last three years you still have to do the affidavit support but you need a co-sponsor and this co-sponsor can be a part of our family or as long as they're a u.s citizen or a green card holder it doesn't matter who they are if they're related to you that's fine do they need to come with us to any like um i was uh inter interview no but you need all the you need all the um same same information the tax returns the income level the proof of income and the proof of current employment okay i got thank you so much and uh one more question if um if you remember i told that i was um staying as a um f1 student and when i was ch changing my f1 to another university i was in the uh, working in the music school so we decided that i violated my uh status yeah. well there. so I show it in the form 485, right. uh, question 17, right? Yeah. I show that, yes. Do I need to explain uh, in additional information that I did violate the status? Which way? Yeah, explain how what happened. Yep. Okay. Um, just, just, a, just a sentence or two. You don't need a whole life story or anything. Okay. So, like, I worked um, longer than it was allowed it for me to work mm -hmm. after my visa Um status expired exactly so um i guess that is that is all uh, last last question so my husband still is in the army there is a question if he um in his forms he um is currently in army currently is he he is in army but he will be discharged do we need to uh put yes or no put yes when i uh, apply for the um if you apply, if if on the day that you apply, he's still in there, say yes. If he's already out, say no. Okay, that's that's all I needed to know. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Hi, right, Natalia. See ya. All right, all right. Um, let's say hi to Lanre. Lanre, are you there? Are you driving? You're on mute. Hello. How are you today? Oh, I can't talk to you while you're driving, buddy. No, I'm parked already. I'm parked. Okay. Cool. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just have one or two questions quickly. Um, I want to apply for my citizenship with my family. My first son is um, um, 21, second son is um, 19, and my third son is um, 17. So is it all of us that we're going to go for the interview all together, or how is it going to be? Who, what kind of case is this? Who sponsored you? It's an uh, asylum case. We got our green card by asylum. So who has their green card? You? All of us. And and oh oh okay. We are we are planning for, we are going for, planning for the interview uh, for the citizenship. Yeah. So so everyone will have to file separate applications, separate N four hundreds, not the seventeen year old. So. When will the 17-year-old turn 18? How far from now? Uh, that will be August next year. Okay, so if you if you apply today and if you get your citizenship, you're the dad, right? Yes. If you get your citizenship before he turns 18, then he'll be a citizen by operation of law 
and he can file an N600 and doesn't have to do the test. But and he, So don't file anything for him now. File an N400 oh. for you and and the other two boys, your other two sons. Okay. And you'll all have to go through the naturalization process. And like I said, if you get it before he turns 18, then, then he'll be a citizen and you'll just have to get him a certificate of citizenship and a passport. Okay, okay. Does okay, that, that means... Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, in other words, I know because I watched through some um, documentary on how the interview is conducted, yeah. because I know they go through the N-400 forms with everybody. Would they go through the same thing for the children? Sure. I see. Yeah, anyone over 18, anyone 19 or above, like... Like uh, when I first started my law firm, my assistant Adela, she had her green card and she, um, her mom became a citizen, but she was 19 when her mom became a citizen. So when Adela, Adela had to apply for citizenship on her own and had to take the test and do all, answer all the questions. Is there something you're worried about or you just want to know? Yeah, I just want to know because, you know, there are so many questions in the N400 where they could say, have you worked? Where have you worked? Where have you traveled to this and that and that? Everybody's no, Everyone's got to fill that shit out. Yep. These are children which they may not be privy to one or two information. So well, they that's just what I'm... They just got to do what their best. Saying? They got to do their best. Do their best. Oh, okay. Then again, I want to know, do they have to go back to the asylum case or how does that go with the interview on their citizenship? I would say that anything is fair game, that they might ask them about the asylum case. They should at least be able to talk about it in broad strokes and explain like why your family got asylum. But I don't think they're going to get into the details of it like line by line. But I think having them read the case or talk to them about the case, I think that's important. But they won't spend much time on it because they were probably they were probably little back then. OK, OK, OK. Um, I also have a, a friend who is also in the same category with me, but I think the friend has um, an issue with um, an authority in um, one African country, which it was also he went to it was he went to the court and from the court to the to the it was sentenced. Now he's also planning to 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 do his um citizenship so he's now wants to know if he needs to put such in the form or maybe the the authority might get to know something something like that so he's a bit confused well you're explaining it to me in a confusing way you're saying he went in front of the authority was he charged with a crime yeah yes i would say so what was the crime um i think um uh, I can't remember vividly, but I know so it's it's about fifteen years ago. But he just told me because he's not he he's, he didn't go in depth with me, but he just made me to understand that he went to court and all that and all that. That is about fifteen years ago. So I would say that before he files for citizenship, he should track down those court records and be able to be confident that it's not something that he should have disclosed before like did he disclose it when he came to the united states was it on his green card application all that stuff he's he's no he did be, not he's not yeah. so that's a problem he needs he needs to talk to a lawyer he needs to get those okay. records and he needs to talk to a lawyer okay that it didn't happen that it happened in africa too he needs to still go through that, that route yeah yeah okay he might need to get a lawyer back in the home country or that country to get it for him okay 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 Thanks, Andre. I will talk to you. Thank you so much, sir. Hi, buddy. See ya. All right, everybody. That'll do it for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Central. I'll be doing it live from D1, where Nor will be working out, and I'll be in the car, maybe, or in the lobby to talk to all of you for an hour about immigration. I hope you all have a great rest of your um, Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow.